afternoon, everyone. It's Paul Gill from Lamico Metals. I'd like to welcome you to our seminar. Um, I'm going to be talking today about Lamico Metals and the lithium graphite revolution and the electric vehicle revolution. Lamico Metals trades under the symbol LMR in Canada on the TSX and under the symbol LMRMF on the OTC and also trades in Frankfurt under the symbol DH8C. We also have various other locations in which um, we trade in the United States. So we're a very well-rounded company uh, with a lot of different shareholders and a, a lot of different locations. So I appreciate your time today. I won't uh, take uh, too much of it, but I do wanna share some very important news that has happened for Lamico in the last little while. As you can see uh, from recent developments, we've been very, very busy. And why are we busy? Well, we because we feel that the uh, electrification of our uh, transportation system is at hand. That means many more lithium ion batteries are needed to power this, uh, these cars, these e-bikes and buses and trucks and, bu and uh, other types of transportation. So what have we been doing? What we've been doing is acquiring projects and developing them. Uh, projects that will produce materials for this electric vehicle revolution. Recently, we acquired 70% interest in the Bourier Lithium Project in Namaska uh, near James Bay. That's a very interesting project, which has just recently produced results last week. In addition to that, uh, we have 100% interest in the Lalut Graphite Project, which is uh, also produced a preliminary economic assessment, which was filed September 10th and is available on our website. We've also just launched a new website, which is in both English and French and has a uh, uh, lots of great information uh, in relation to our development there. We've reported a preliminary economic assessment, as I've mentioned, um, and that is a 274-page document that was done by Osenko Engineering, which is very comprehensive and defines a very valuable project, and I'll get into the project itself. So what did we do? Well, we knew this was coming, so we started talking to the community and, and are opening a stakeholder relations office near the mine location. In addition to that, um, we also wanted to test to see what kind of material we had, and we've come up with excellent results. That was uh, posted on April 7th, if you're looking in the news. For, um, it was a SGS that did a full metallurgical testing on the project and it was uh, reported in, that we had up to 97.8% carbon content re recovery after processing in 93.5% uh, graphite uh, on, uh, the, um, on the extraction from the ground. That was over 200 kilograms of material that was sampled and we do have to do much more, but it was a good start. In addition to that, we have 3.5 million in cash at present, and also um, 1.5 million in flow through shares, which isn't really part of that hard dollar total of 3.5, but will be used for exploration in the future. In addition, we've hired an environmental consultant for a environmental baseline study, uh, that's Hemera. That will be a, a, a good um, uh, assessment of where the project, where the situation is, uh, in the area right now for the environment. It will uh, give us a picture of where we stand so that we can then remediate the land back to uh, the original state. It's very important uh, to do that. Very uh, much part of our ESG mandate that we've uh, been part of. And so we're very proud to uh, work in the area and do our best to uh, service the local area, the, gov the needs of the government and the needs of the industry. So a little picture of where we are. Uh, the graphite development and lithium exploration is now um, a part of our part of our makeup. We have had uh, the loot graphite property for about 
five years and developed since 2016, a very good uh, project um, that has two different zones of interest, the EV zone and the graphene battery zone, and also the Bury Lithium Project, which is located in Namaska, as we said, close to James Bay, but it is also optioned from uh, Critical Elements, which owns the green um, rose lithium tantalum area uh, in, in this picture. But um, because Borier is a little bit on the outside of the exploration package, it hasn't been uh, explored as much. So we have a potential to, to uh, make discoveries. And in fact, as we announced last week, we have made a discovery of over 15 lithium targets on the project. This is one of the new big new stories out of Lamico, which adds a very interesting upside uh, for the project. Um, this whole trend is all lithium. So we have a very prospective area to, to explore into the future as we develop a mine. So why are we even bothering to do this? Well, we feel that electric vehicles are part of the new decade to come. It is an integral, integral part of the economy going forward. This is a big change. Now, we saw computers go from nothing in 1980, no one had them, to everyone having them by 1990. In 1990, no one had the internet, but by 2000, everyone had the internet. In 2000, a few people had smartphones. By 2010, everyone had a smartphone. In 2010, no one had social media. And by 2020, everyone had social media. So the big change that's going to happen in your lifetime that you must be aware of is the rise of the electric vehicle and how to participate and make money from that knowledge. That's what I'm here to discuss today. It's not about me, it's about you and what you can do to make yourself uh, wealthy by taking an opportunity that is speculative right now and being able to, to stick with it in the long term to turn the corner and create wealth. Can it be done? Yes, it can. It's being done every day by many companies. We are one of those opportunities because of the price we're at and the potential we have. So keep that in mind. There's three kinds of people in this world. There's the people who know what's going to happen and take action. There's the people who, who kind of know what's happening but don't take action. And then there's the people who don't know what's happening and don't take action and are clueless. Don't be number two and number three. I'm giving you the knowledge to take action. This is not about just information. This is not a library. If you wanna read a book, go to the library. This is about you taking action. That's the only way this will work. So we need people to take action and that's why we're here today. I'm very forceful about this because it is now the time to do it. Why? What is the background? Graphite is a big requirement in the future. It is going to be needed in lithium ion batteries. There is 92 kilograms of graphite in a Tesla much more than there is lithium, but lithium is more expensive. Well, what if the price of graphite changed so it was just as expensive? Well, do we know how prices change? Supply and demand. If there is more demand for graphite, the price goes up. Does it look like the demand is going up in this picture? I think so. Does it look like the prices would likely follow? I think so. So keep in mind, we're talking about the future, and this is one of the reasons you should be paying very close attention to this company. Another reason that's very intriguing and very interesting is the price of the material. As you can see, 
there's many different areas in which graphite is used. Flake graphite is used in additives, electrical industry, smelting, brake shoes, refractories, gaskets, lubricants, pencils. Of course, everyone needs a pencil, but it's not worth much to make. But electric vehicle batteries, the price is far different. As you can see, the range is almost $3,000 per ton of material. That's a very important number because if we could sell it for that, then we will have a, a profit margin that's very nice. And I'll talk about the cost of our development and what we estimate we can sell it for. So what is the other background and what is the other catalyst? Right now, there's a critical metals agreement between the US and Canada so that Canada can supply up to 13 types of materials to the US. Why are they doing this? Because they know that China controls much of the supply of lithium, graphite, rare earths, et cetera. And they cannot be have their economies beholden to that uh, um, uh, China in, in that regard. So they need to develop on their own. They're very slow on developing this and they need to catch up fast, which means projects like ours will get a lot of attention. Not only has Trudeau signed with uh, the, um, the US, but he's also signed with Europe. So this is the future uh, that Canada will become a supplier. And the key point in all of this is Quebec, because Quebec has an international port right at the center of a location where there's incredible graphite and lithium projects, and we have two of them. So here is our Lalut graphite project. What you see here is a very large project. Uh, it's in purple in the middle of your screen. You see the port of Montreal in blue down at the, um, at the base uh, of, the, of the picture. And as you can see, uh, this location allows for ships to travel out to the east coast of the United States and even to the southern part of the United States in Texas, where the Tesla factory is, and also to Europe, where there are more factories are going to be made. We know that there's going to be more and more of these lithium ion factories, which will be building uh, are requiring lots of lithium and graphite, and they will also be needed for electric vehicles, electric bikes, all kinds of electric types of vehicles. So the, the other thing that's very interesting is we have good road access for the project. This red line is a highway that goes all the way from Montreal, all the way to the, right by the project. And we only need to build a small uh, road uh, that uh, will get us uh, the power and also uh, transportation back and forth from, from the project. So that's a very interesting situation. So what has this project been able to produce? Why is it so interesting? Well, we have indicated that after Asenko Engineering has developed a 274 page report, which is called the Preliminary Economic Assessment, that the estimated value of the project is $186 million. Our market cap is only 25 million. So imagine what that does to the potential upside for Lumico. It is almost, that would be almost nine times the price of the stock at present. Now, we also know that the internal rate of return is 21.5%. That means payback, uh, it, that incorporates the cost of 236 million to build a project. It will be paid off in 4.2 years, and there'll be over 11 years of profitability on the project. So it's incredibly important to understand that this is a large project, it is a valuable project, and that 886 million valuation is not the total profitability of the project after, after taxes. No, that is only, that is only 8% of the total cash to be made the total cash to be made is close to $2 billion on the project. So imagine that. This is a 15 year project, remember. So it will be making millions and millions of dollars, probably a hundred million or more uh, over the course of each year going forward. 
And that's, that's what we want to see. Now, why is that happening? It's because the cost of production is only $400 approximately. And the average selling price we've estimated for that 15 years is $916 per ton on a long-term weighted average price. So what we understand is that's a good gap. But remember, if we were able to make anodes, they sell for $2,700 to $2,800 per ton. So there's more opportunity in the market than, uh, than just, uh, just selling the raw graphite. So a little picture of where we are and what's happening. Uh, this is the EV zone I mentioned before. It is one of the uh, zones right here. And this is the, the graphene battery zone. It's, it's located here. But as you can see, there's many or more areas of, of mineralization we haven't even touched yet. So what, on this, just these two zones, we've been able to create 15 years of mine life. So definitely there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of upside. This area here, as you can see circled uh, with the lines is a, a co-disposal site that allows us to store material that's, um, that's taken from the, from the pits and, um, and then uh, re reintegrate the, the material back into the pits later on. Um, it also allows for us to re remove water safely and without touching any of those streams and rivers in the area. Uh, the processing facility is located here, and we should see some um, uh, ability for that processing facil facility to last for 25 years. So there's more capacity uh, that's left in, in the facility and, and more opportunity to create um, uh, a longer term uh, mine. So in summary, what is Lumico uh, all about? We're about creating value. We've delivered. Uh, we've proven that we have a, a mine that is uh, viable for the long term. It's going to be very valuable. And right now with 240 million shares approximately out and, and 70 million shares outstanding, uh, we have the opportunity to create a, a big, big opportunity in the market. Uh, for our shareholders. We have over 5 million in cash, including the, the, um, the flow through shares as well. Now I'd like to point out that our nearest competitor, which has been permitted to mine, Nouveau Monde, is actually worth $350 million. So they trade on the New York Stock Exchange at over $6 per share we trade at about 10 cents a share in the US and Canada. So I think the opportunity is here. I leave it to you um, to contact the company and discuss uh, the, the project. And I thank you for your time. Take care.